and welcome to Serpente Sunday for April 23rd, 2023. I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary. And not too long ago, I showed you how I fill these exercise tents up with basically trash, with cardboard boxes and paper and other things that I was going to throw away, but were basically clean. They had just come in the mail or Things that had been shipped came in them, and they were just basically empty containers that I put in the exercise tents for the snakes to use. So I thought I would show you this week how I go about cleaning those out. So I've totally emptied this exercise tent of all of the cardboard boxes and enrichment items, and I've thrown those away. I do that periodically, about once a week or so. I pull all of the old trash and then I clean the exercise tent the way that you see me doing now and I use this accelerated hydrogen peroxide product called rescue and I dilute it in a spray bottle with water and that's what I spray down the inside of the exercise tent with now these exercise tents can get wet they're meant to be outside and to contain pets and pet waste and to easily be cleaned so I dilute that rescue into an aerosol spray and I spray down the inside of the tent. I also have rescue wipes and those come all ready to use. And so once I've left the tent with that spray sitting on it for several minutes, then I wipe it down with the rescue wipes. And I can wipe all of the surfaces with this. And after I do this, and this is really the hard part where I live, is then I wash it down with water. And if you're able to take it outside and spray it down with a hose, that's probably the easiest thing to do. Or if you have a bathtub or a shower that has a spray nozzle in it, that would be easy as well. But what I have to do to spray this clean, now I guess I could just get lots and lots of wet towels with just plain water and wipe that down and, until it's clean, but I have to use my sink. So the top comes off. The screen top and the partial shade top come off and I could actually throw that in the washing machine and I have. And then if you have one of the exercise tents that has a removable bottom, you can unzip the top and the bottom and you can just throw those parts in the washing machine and wash them just like you would regular laundry and then take them out and they're clean. This one I just rinsed off in the sink and now I'm going to show you what I have to go through to rinse out the rest of it. And my husband just loves this because I inevitably always get water on the floor. So I do have a spray nozzle on my kitchen sink. So I kind of lean the thing over the kitchen sink and I use the spray nozzle to spray out the inside of the exercise tent. Again, it's fine for this to get wet. That's what it's meant to do. And so I think the easiest way to clean it is to use all your cleaning supplies, whatever that may be, and wipe it down and then ultimately rinse it off with just plain water and so that's what i'm doing here and i'm trying to be careful not to spill any water onto the floor so now it's obviously wet and i could wipe that down with a dry towel and then i'm just going to leave it air out the more i work with these exercise tents these cloth exercise pens that were originally meant for dogs but now i see companies advertising them with different pocket pets, exotic mammals, even reptiles inside them on the pictures. I really like this particular brand. It's He Ping. They come in different sizes and I have all different sizes, but it's really, really sturdy. The canvas is very, very thick and sturdy. And all of the parts where it comes together, like the zippers are very, very sturdy. I've just never had any issues with this particular brand. It seems durable, it seems tough, and it seems sturdy. And with everything that I do with these, that's what I really appreciate. Now this is the same brand, it's a bigger one. The bigger ones have a removable bottom as well as a removable top. And so you just have to watch where the zippers come together at the top and the bottom or on the doors that there's not a space big enough for a snake to get out between the zippers. With my larger snakes or medium sized snakes, it's not an issue, but there is also this hole in the side of some models 
for a water bottle to fit through. Like if you have a rabbit or some kind of pet in here that drinks out of a hanging water bottle, you put the water bottle on the outside and the metal nozzle that the animal drinks from goes on the inside. So you've got to cover that if your snake is small enough to get out of that hole. Now I'm just showing you something that I do sometimes to make the space more enriching, more stimulating, just different for the snakes. And that is put one tent inside another. I have a smaller round tent I've put inside this bigger one before. Now this is a oblong oval shaped tent that I've put inside this one. And so the neat thing about this is I can fill the interior tent. I can put things in the tent at large, but it gives the snakes just this feeling that they're investigating more environments than just the one big open tent and they can climb on top of and underneath the tent that's inside the bigger one. Now the pink and tan one, the bright pink and tan one on top is just drying out and airing out from me cleaning it. This is my biggest one and it's in this case right now. It's three feet tall and it is five feet across. So it is 36 inches tall and it's five feet in diameter or five feet, 60 inches across. So it really takes up a lot of space when I get that one out. This one that I'm putting Spock in right now, and you see I've added even more stuff to it now that I'm putting him inside, is four feet across and two feet high. But I thought I would show you how I go about cleaning it and then putting a snake in it and how you can configure it in different ways. It's just really up to your own creativity as long as you've made it safe for your snake or other animal, and as long as the things that you put inside it are safe for your snake or your other reptile, and it makes sense to them as far as their natural history, their species biology and natural history, and their natural behavioral repertoire and what that would be. The things inside it need to make sense to them. That's all for this week. I do have a surprise for you in the coming weeks. I've gotten two new exercise items, which I am going to show you in future videos. One is a very long, um, six foot long by two foot high by three foot wide exercise tent. And the other one is a type of catio that I'm gonna try out for the snakes.